This is KGW News at Noon. McMinnville police are dealing with a rash of fentanyl overdoses today. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. Here's what we know so far. The first call came in just after 1 a.m. saying there were multiple people unconscious at a home on Northwest Cedar Street. The three men and one woman were revived with Narcan and taken to McMinnville Hospital where the woman later died. Now, as all that was going on, police say someone in the Yamhill County Jail also OD'd on fentanyl. And then they tell us two more people overdosing on fentanyl showed up at McMinnville Hospital in a private car. At this point, police don't know if all these cases are connected. As we learn more, we will update you on air and on KGW.com. It's not just about our son, it's about others. We want to make sure that this doesn't happen to someone else. That father says two students launched a racist attack on his eighth grade son at West Sylvan Middle School. The incident happened last month and the dad doesn't think Portland public is taking it seriously enough. KGW's Alma McCarty walks us through what happened. I was flabbergasted, I was outraged, I was angry. Um, I, I couldn't even believe what I was hearing. That's Raheem Alexander's reaction after his eighth grade son told him what happened in the hallway of West Sylvan Middle School last month. He just left his classroom to get some water when Alexander says he was accosted by two students. They threw him up against a wall, um, bound his hands behind his back um, and said they were you know, treating him like George Floyd. Um, proceeded to throw him on the ground face first uh, with his hands bound behind his back, uh, tied with a lanyard, uh, put their knee in his back uh, and said that they were going to turn off their body cameras and they were going to wait 20 seconds um, to, uh, to insinuate the uh, death of George Floyd. Horrified by what he heard, Alexander wanted to make sure the school was up front about the attack. He met with school officials the next week about issuing a statement to all parents in the district. We want to make sure that you put the details of what happened to our son inside of this letter that get drafted and make sure that it goes out to PPS because it's not just about our son, it's about others. We want to make sure that this doesn't happen to someone else. But that message wasn't sent out district wide. The middle school principal sent a letter to West Sylvan families only on January 25th, writing she was deeply saddened to share that the school experienced a horrific hate-based incident the week prior, noting that they were limited in what they could say since it was an ongoing investigation involving students. Alexander believes this statement didn't properly address the seriousness of what happened to his son. We can't throw it under the rug, which um, is what they did. Um, they failed to put it out. They failed to get in front of it. Now, Alexander says he's hoping to shed light on the attack as his 13 year old continues to process what happened. My son has to see these images and, and videos of things that happen in our country to young black men and for it to be reenacted to him inside of our school during school hours is is deeply troubling. Alma McCarty, KGW News. A district source told the Oregonian, which first reported the attack, that the two students responsible have been expelled. PPS sent us here at KGW a statement yesterday saying in part, the district stands firmly against any hateful acts in our schools. It went on to say once officials were aware of the incident, they followed discipline protocols and provided support to those impacted. Unfortunately, each winter we see these viruses come back. We do see impacts and it can be hard to have a sick child at home, but better to have them at home and care for them than to have them at school where they could spread the virus to others. That is Dr. Dean Seidlinger with the Oregon Health Authority. He's talking about the stomach bug that forced Metzger Elementary in Tigard to close today for the second day in a row. The Tigard Tualatin School District says both students and staff got sick with the virus. Cleaning crews are disinfecting the school as we speak and it's expected to reopen on Monday. In the meantime, if parents have any questions about the outbreak, they can contact the school directly. 
Well, the Oregon Health Authority says we are nearing the end of RSV season. It says fewer people are going to the hospital with the virus. Flu cases are also tapering off and COVID hospitalizations have been dropping since December. If this continues, OHA may lift mask requirements in healthcare settings. Well, Multnomah County is ramping up renovations at the Central Library here in Portland. It will completely transform the space, but it also means the library has to close for much of the year. It'll shut down starting March 11th. When it reopens, there's going to be lots of new things, more USB plug-ins, a designated space for teenagers, a gaming room, and a quiet meeting space. The project will give people new ways to use Central Library that looks very different than the way people were using libraries 30 or 40 years ago. In the meantime, if you need access to a computer or printer, there's a pop-up technology space at 5th and Washington you can use. Voters passed a bond measure back in 2020 to pay for those library upgrades. All right, let's head back to the Weather Center on your Friday. What's the radar showing you today, Rod? Yeah, well, this is the last three hours. If you sit here and stare at it with me, you get the idea that the green is fading away. So that is radar showing us that the showers are just about ready to be, for the most part, over. Certainly the wettest part of our day was the numerous shower activity that we had earlier this morning. Still a lot of clouds out there. Here's the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out in Aloha after a wet morning. But we are opening up some blue sky. Here's Stoller Family Vineyards Estate down in Dayton. Again, the ground's still wet from the shower activity. And there are some thin spots starting to open up in Portland, although from this fan's point, pretty overcast out there. The temperature's warmed up, though. We're at 48 degrees, so we will easily get up into the 50s this afternoon. I mean, the rain chance moving forward is not zero, but most of us probably have seen the final raindrop of the day. It will be completely dry for your Friday evening plans. Light winds, partly cloudy, 46 at 8 p.m. Okay, Brenda, the weekend is still dry ahead, but remember I'm tracking rain and dropping snow levels into Valentine's morning. That updated forecast coming up. We'll see you then. Thanks, Rod. This noon, we want to let you know about two traffic alerts. Within the hour at 1 o'clock, we've confirmed that Bill Shonley's funeral procession will make its way from Lake Oswego to Willamette National Cemetery in southeast Portland. It'll travel through the city on I-5 South and northbound I-205. Police will manage traffic and say drivers should expect delays. Family and friends attended a private service for Sean Lee today. He was the Blazers' legendary announcer who died last month at the age of 93. Also a heads up for drivers this weekend. The Morrison Bridge will close to all traffic, including bikes and pedestrians. City crews will be painting and doing maintenance. The closure starts tonight at 10 and will wrap up Monday morning at 5. A Washington senator led the charge yesterday, grilling executives from Southwest Airlines about the travel fiasco over the holidays. For 10 days in December, the airline canceled 17,000 flights, leaving travelers stranded nationwide. Southwest had a slew of problems with the icing and staffing and technology. Washington Senator Maria Cantwell led this hearing on Capitol Hill. The president of the Southwest Pilots Association said they've been warning management about tech issues for years. And an airline representative testified that Southwest is putting in a key software upgrade today. Uh, yes, Senator, uh, uh, tomorrow uh, the Reflex will go in and it'll be live in our production system. It's already had two rounds in our test system. So that the same event, if it happened in a week, we would have a different outcome that technology would not stop functioning. As I mentioned in my testimony, we believe our winter operations resiliency was the root cause, and that'll take longer to address. The airline also announced it's investing just over a billion dollars in new technology. So far, Southwest has given more than 96% of affected passengers a refund.